I have finished my flat coloring and I have chosen a way that I like to deal with that halo. I don't want to get rid of it entirely as I could do by just duplicating. Oh, let me plug in my other mic. I have decided for my flat coloring to, to soften that halo a little bit and make it look a little bit more intentional, like it's airbrushed in. And then that's going to flow through. What I decide in my flat color layer is going to flow through the rest of my coloring options. So this is what, oops. So what I started with was this, and it had that little ridge. And to get rid of that, I made a duplicate and then I used Gaussian Blur as a filter to take a sharpness away from my edges. So Blur, Gaussian Blur, and then I set it at a level to which I was happy with. But what Gaussian Blur does is it basically feathers after the fact all of your edges and softens them. So I'll turn my rulers off so you can see. So this is it at the most blurred, and then I duplicated it again and if you duplicate a blur, it's going to be more and more opaque each time. So as I duplicate it, it fills it in more and more. And eventually, depending on the blur I use, I can get it to fill in all the way, if that's what you want. Right? And then I can just select them and merge them all together. So I have options for my flat color. What I chose to do was to duplicate it just once, take it down to 59%, and then change that to a dissolve, which breaks up that low opacity into individual pixels, which make it look a little bit more hand done. And though on the computer screen, it can look really, really uh, harsh because the pixels are, you know, separated out, it prints very, very nicely and realistically because printing dots are different than pixels. So this is the flat color I'm happy with. What's the next step? Well, I want to merge that flat color together. And then I'm going to give it a color. So I'm going to call it green. Or you know what? I've been saying cheese, so let me make it yellow. So my flat color is like the yellow between the white bread. I don't think white is an option I have. Let me see. So between the white bread and the black bread, I only have turned on one layer of color, and that's the cheese. Now I'm going to lock and keep my original flat color layer, which has the harsh edge, just so I can um, make other decisions for how I deal with that edge later if I want. But I'm going to turn it off. I'm not going to use it. So I just have one layer of color now. If I want to check how it works on different backgrounds, I can duplicate my background, and I can say fill with black. And I can see how those flat colors work on a black background. And they look a little soft just because of that softened edge and because all my black line art kind of disappears on black, right? I haven't added any offset yet. But those colors look pretty good. And then I can also do it on gray. So let me duplicate the black layer. Oops. Or actually, I usually do it this way. I'll duplicate the white layer again and then fill it with gray. Time seems to be going very fast today. 
And then, yeah, the colors work okay on gray. So they seem kind of well contrasted. So I'll turn those white, uh, those black and gray layers off. Now I want to make a more complicated sandwich. Sometimes I add um, chinis and spinach and tomatoes to a grilled cheese sandwich, right? So if I want to make my grilled cheese sandwich more interesting, I'm going to duplicate the cheese layer, the flat color layer. But I'm now going to make it a duotone. So instead of yellow, I'm going to darken it. And I'm going to call it, instead of flat color, um, shadow. So I'll call this duplicate of my flat color layer shadow color. And what this is called is duotone. So I should really call it, oh, it didn't take my name. Oh, there it is. I should really call it duotone shadow color. Now I'm going to lock my flat color with the padlock because I only want to affect the shadows. And now I want to do darker versions of all of the flat colors. So I'm going to go to image adjustments. I'm going to go to levels. And I'm just going to use my adjustment sliders here, like we did when we were compositing. And I'm going to push that mid-tone slider to the right to get darker values for everything. I can also do this by limiting the highlights in the colors so that there's less contrast between them. And you can go pretty bold here. So now we have a darker version of our flat colors. So how do I decide what my shadows are? It's actually quite simple. I'm just going to use my magic wand, and I'm going to cut out where I think the highlights should be. So maybe like along the top of the skull. I'll show you roughly here. And then I just hit delete. And I'll get highlights showing through there. Now this is going to give me what's called a hard edge duotone. So on the blade of the knife, I for sure want the cutting edge to have a highlight. So I'm going to lasso around that and then just hit delete. And you can feel pretty safe doing this because it's just a copy of something you already have. On the bridge of the nose, I'm pretty sure I want to highlight, even if it's kind of rough. So I cut it out. I'm going to be a little bit more careful now on the top ridge of the skull. Cut out a highlight. What about the tongue? Before it gets into the shadow of the teeth. Cut out a highlight along the back ridge of the skull, pretty thin at first. I can even shape these highlights, wrap them around. So that's what's kind of fun about hard edge duotone coloring is you can really make shapes and kind of add content with how you cut out your shadows. And duotone coloring sounds like two tones, right? But really, it's any combination of lights and darks of the same uh, flat color. So I'm not limited to just one light tone and one dark tone. I can work between multiples. But I always like to start with just a basic treatment. And what I like about this cutout approach is it affects all the, the colors equally. So it cuts from both the, the skull and the heart at the same time. Little fragments that make it look more like a bone texture.
and it takes some practice and some getting used to. But that is how you can set up your shadow layer of duotone coloring. And then you can set up a duplicate again, and you can create a highlight layer using your adjustments and pushing the sliders the other way. Because your local flat color is usually more saturated than either of your duotones, either your shadows or your highlights. Now, where is duotone coloring especially helpful? It's where you have just big areas of flat color that are kind of uh, dead looking and uninteresting to you. And this is all uh, hard edge duotone, which is what animation uses. In, a, in animation, it's called cell shading as a type of painting because it exists outside of the line work. but then we can always soften it. So big areas like the beard, I can help the mustache to be a lot more defined by giving it a highlight. And unfortunately my lasso is being really angular. It's because this is a big file it's a browser-based program. But I don't need to worry about these shapes not being perfect because I'll have the opportunity to keep working with them. I'm not uh, losing any pixels that I don't have on another layer that I can always get back. So those of you who have to head to another class, you definitely can. I'm just gonna continue this example so I can post it to our YouTube page. And this is duotone coloring because we are just doing a light and a dark version of the, the local flat color underneath. And so far, I'm just doing it with one extra layer, which is just the shadows. And even if it's kind of sloppily done, I think it's pretty helpful. So I hope you'll all have the time to experiment with it and see if duotone is something that's going to work for your image. Now you start with hard edge duotone, and then we can make a duplicate of that, and then we can try softening it. So we have lots of options. And my work usually uses a mix of both hard edged like this and soft edge duotone to get my finished result. And that's true a lot of the professional work you see out there. It's really only in styles like animation where they'll be pretty disciplined to only use hard edge duotone just because it's easier to match across multiple animators.